the play is about whether we should tell the truth or not and how we want to immortalize ourselves and be remembered in history whether that be just by family and friends or whether that be internationally and um, if we should create our own image of ourselves or whether we should just be truthful to ourselves the play is uh, one conversation really it lasts about an hour and a half and it was a conversation that they had just before they met with a film producer um, that they'd contacted to have a meeting with about turning their lives into a film uh, as in the adventures of the craze or something and uh, and so they borrowed a mansion from a friend of theirs and then flew this film producer over from America and had a meeting with him and but the play is the moment just before he arrives so it's their conversation about what they should tell him what they shouldn't tell him uh, how careful they need to be as well as then also dealing with a lot of things themselves in that an hour and a half really dealing with some truth that they really don't want to talk about that they want to forget for example Reggie's um, relationship with Francis Shea the guilt there and almost shame of her suicide the the infamous side of them the the, the fact they wanted to create their own images and celebrity culture side side of them uh, was fascinating um, and then when I found the story about them wanting to make a film of their lives I thought my goodness what an amazing conversation that they would have had um, and so so yeah it just utterly fascinating this little bit of London history and then getting to perform it in London was amazing we, we managed to find a, a really nice uh, intimate fringe theatre and uh, it, it, it all happened really quickly actually it took about three months to get it all set up and going and publicized um, and we came came up with a really really fascinating and successful story surprisingly so many people came to see it that were ardent Cray fans and absolutely loved it I mean that's what well, the actors were phenomenal anyway it was a tour de force from both of them and and they really went into those psychotic places and they really got what they were about um, and there was every single night every single night the audience would stay and they would chat and they would talk about their experiences of family members knowing the craze. So it was more of a community activity, right? an hour and a half play, but it was a four hour um, uh, little function that happened and, and it was absolutely lovely to be honest. And so that the film idea seemed like the best thing. They had so many friends in film, actors, um, singers that, that, that obviously would feel like the most natural course for them to do. Everybody knew them, um, everybody wanted to tell the stories of them and they wanted to uh, almost mark themselves in history and what better way to do it than um, a, a film when film was such an amazing part of that era. From what I uh, could gather they were just massive fans of the big American gangster movies. Yeah I think it, well, it, it made them different so instead of just being typical gangsters they were the twin gangsters that's what set them aside from everyone else and that slightly strange brotherly love that everyone always talks about with them I think that is what made them quite individual. Uh, the fact that they would um, have a cup of tea randomly um, and then go away and do whatever it was they were needing to do that, that evening. Um, and that juxtaposition between the two of them is what is absolutely fascinating. But that's, what fasc that's what's fascinating about so many criminals. Um, just the fact that they were normal people. And I think so many people love the fact that they were normal people and the fact that they're grounded in London history as well. You can you can go to where they drank. You can go to where you can go to the clubs that they owned, um, and people can almost like still relive that 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 era.